Hello everyone, this is Manoj, your English coach. Welcome to Love English. And in today's video, I'm gonna be reading the story The Night Train at Deoli by Ruskin Bond. Now let's get started. When I was at college, I used to spend my summer vacations in Dehra at my grandmother's place. I would leave the planes early in May and return late in July. Delhi was a small station about 30 miles from Dehra. It marked the beginning of the heavy jungles of the Indian Terai. The train would reach Deoli at about 5 in the morning when the station would be dimly lit with electric bulbs and oil lamps and the jungle across the railway tracks would just be visible in the faint light of dawn. Deoli had only one platform an office for the station master and a waiting room. The platform hosted a tea stall, a fruit vendor and a few stray dogs. Not much else because the train stopped there for only 10 minutes before rushing on into the forests. Why it stopped at Deoli? I don't know. Nothing ever happened there. Nobody got off the train and nobody got on. There were never any coolies on the platform. But the train would haul there a full 10 minutes and then a bell would sound. The guard would blow his whistle and presently Delhi would be left behind and forgotten. I used to wonder what happened in Delhi behind the station walls. I always felt sorry for that lonely little platform and for the place that nobody wanted to visit. I decided that one day I would get off the train at Deoli and, the, and spend the day there just to please the town. I was 18, visiting my grandmother and the night train stopped at Deoli. A girl came down the platform selling baskets. It was a cold morning and the girl had a shawl thrown across her shoulders. Her feet were bare and her clothes were old but she was a young girl, walking gracefully and with dignity. When she came to my window, she stopped. She saw that I was looking at her intently. But at first, she pretended not to notice. She had pale skin, set off by shiny black hair and dark, troubled eyes. And then those eyes, searching and eloquent, met mine. She stood by my window for some time and neither of us said anything. But when she moved on, I found myself leaving my seat and going to the carriage door. I stood waiting on the platform, looking the other way. I walked across to the teal stall. A kettle was boiling over a small fire, but the owner of the stall was busy serving tea somewhere on the train. The girl followed me behind the stall. Do you want to buy a basket? She asked. They are very strong, where the finest came. No, I said, I don't want a basket. We stood, looking at each other, for what seemed a very long time. And she said, are you sure you don't want a basket? All right, give me one, I said, and took the one on top and gave her a peek hardly daring to touch her fingers. As she was about to speak, the guard blew his whistle. She said something, but it was lost in the clanging of the bell and the hissing of the engine. I had to run back to my compartment. The carriage shuddered and jolted forward. I watched her as the platform slipped away. She was alone on the platform and she did not move, but she was looking at me and smiling. 
I watched her until the signal box came in the way, and then the jungle hit the station. But I could still see her standing there alone. I stayed awake for the rest of the journey. I could not rid my mind of the picture of the girl's face and her dark, smouldering eyes. But when I reached Dehra, the incident became blurred and distant. For there were the other things to occupy my mind. It was only when I was making the return journey, two months later, that I remembered the girl. I was looking out for her as the train drew into the station, and I felt an unexpected thrill when I saw her walking up the platform. I sprang off the footboard and waved to her. When she saw me, she smiled. She was pleased that I remembered her. I was pleased that she remembered me. We were both pleased, and it was almost like a meeting of all friends. She did not go down the length of the train selling baskets, but came straight to the tea stall. Her dark eyes were suddenly filled with light. We said nothing for some time, but we could not have been more eloquent. I felt the impulse to put her on the train there and then, and take her away with me. I could not bear the thought of having to watch her recede into the distance of Deoli Station. I took the baskets from her, her hand, and put them down on the ground. She put out her hand for one of them, but I caught her hand and held it. I have to go to Delhi, I said. She nodded. I do not have to go anywhere. The guard blew his whistle for the train to leave, and how I hated the guard for doing that. I will come again, I said. Will you be here? She nodded again, and. As she nodded, the bell clanged and the train slid forward. I had to wrench my hand away from the girl and run for the moving train. This time, I did not forget her. She was with me for the remainder of the journey and for long after. All that year, she was a bright living thing. And when the college term finished, I packed in haste. And left for Dehra earlier than usual. My grandmother would be pleased at my eagerness to see her. I was nervous and anxious as the train drew into Deoli because I was wondering what I should say to the girl and what I should do. I was determined that I would not stand helplessly before her, hardly able to speak or do anything. About my feelings, the train came to Deoli, and I looked up and down the platform, but I could not see the girl anywhere. I opened the door and stepped off the footboard. I was deeply disappointed and overcome by a sense of foreboding. I felt I had to do something, and so I ran up to the station master and said, "Do you know the girl who used to sell baskets here?" No, I don't," said the station master. "And you'd better get on the train if you don't want to be left behind." But I paced up and down the platform and stared over the railings at the station yard. All I saw was a mango tree and a dusty road leading into the jungle. Where did the road go? The train was moving out of the station, and I had to run up to the platform. And jump for the door of my compartment. Then, as the train gathered speed and rushed through the forest, I sat brooding in front of the window. What could I do about finding a girl I had seen only twice, who had hardly spoken to me, and about whom I knew nothing, absolutely nothing, but for whom I felt a tenderness and responsibility that I had never felt before? My grandmother was not pleased with my visit after all. 
because I didn't stay at her place more than a couple of weeks. I felt restless and ill at ease. So I took the train back to the plains, meaning to ask further questions of the station master at Deoli. But at Deoli, there was a new station master. The previous man had been transferred to another post within the past week. The new man didn't know anything about the girl who sold baskets. I found the owner of the tea stall, a small shriveled up man wearing greasy clothes and asked him if he knew anything about the girl with the baskets. Yes, there was a, such a girl here. I remember quite well, he said. But she has stopped coming now. Why? I asked. What happened to her? How should I know? said the man. She was nothing to me. And once again I had to run for the train. As the only platform receded, I decided that one day I would have to break journey there, spend a day in the town, make inquiries and find the girl who had stolen my heart with nothing but a look from her dark, impatient eyes. With this thought, I consoled myself, so at my last term in college, I went to Dehra again in the summer and when, in the early hours of the morning, the night train drew into Devli station, I looked up and down the platform for signs of the girl, knowing I would not find her but hoping just, to, just the same. Somehow, I could not bring myself to break journey at Devli and spend a day there. If it was all fiction or a film, I reflected I would have bought down and cleared up the mystery and reached the suitable ending to the whole thing. I think I was afraid to do this. I was really afraid of discovering what really happened to the girl. Perhaps she was no longer in Deoli. Perhaps she was married. Perhaps she had fallen ill. In the last few years, I have passed through Deoli many times. And I always look out of the carriage window, half expecting to see the same unchanged face smiling up at me. I wonder what happens in Deoli, behind the station walls, but I will never break my journey there. I prefer to keep hoping and dreaming and looking out of the window up and down that lonely platform, waiting for the girl with the baskets. I never break my journey at Deoli, but I pass through as often as I can. Thank you for attending this session. Do share and subscribe to this channel for more lessons like this. Check out other video lessons by clicking on the video.